name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Personal note. Yesterday on the calendar, today liturgically, and tomorrow liturgically, I celebrate 27 years of ordination. Last night, I was given a ride home to Georgetown campus, and we drove exactly by St. Nicholas Cathedral, where it all began. I'm very happy to be able to stand here this morning and thank you to Father Alexander for allowing me to offer the Holy Mysteries this morning. Also to Father Victor for allowing me to serve the pre-sanctified liturgy last night, but also to be standing here with you. Because it wouldn't be a service unless you were here. It would be impossible to actually serve these mysteries without your presence. And so that leads to a fact about the life of St. Theodore the Recruit. My first assignment as a priest was actually in a chapel on a naval training base where they make new sailors. In other words, it's called boot camp in English. It was called St. Theodore the Recruit. And so we come full circle, full cycle. What's a fact about being a recruit? Well, first of all, you're at the bottom of everything in the military. You're not a sergeant. You're not a corporal. You're not a lance corporal. You're not even a private. You're nothing. You're just a recruit. What else happens in your life? You lose everything. Your clothes. They take them all away. They put them in a box. They lock them up. They give you a uniform. You wear boots, most likely. Although now we're enlightened, they have tennis shoes and running shoes for, for sport and for running, taking better care of everybody's orthopedics. This was true in Roman days. You lost your old identity and you became a new somebody in the Roman army, just as it is today in pretty much every military force in the world. And so now you have a saint who underwent this process and then it came time to offer the sacrifices to the gods. And as a soldier, that would be part of his duties. And so now you see the conflict. The recruit is under an oath to obey Caesar, to obey the law of the land. And it is a just law. However, it has a religious component at this time. It involves actually giving offerings to pagan gods. Probably in this case, most likely, the god in question actually was the emperor himself. What it, parenthetically, I will tell you what it meant. It literally only meant coming up and dropping incense on charcoal in front of a statue. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's not very much. Well, you could have done that. You could have gone up and put a spoonful of incense, for heaven's sakes, and it wouldn't have been such a terrible thing. What's important about the recruit and why he's a good saint for Lent, that he would not do that. Just like Polycarp, one of the most famous martyrdoms, he would not even put one grain of incense on the charcoal in front of the statue of the emperor. And the answer is, and it's a gospel answer, I belong to Christ. I belong to Christ. Christ is in me, and I am in him, and that bond can't be broken. In other words, a statement of the faith. Baptism erases and supersedes all of our other responsibilities in this world. Yes, that's the Christian message. Baptism is number one. Life in Christ is number one. Or as a Protestant minister friend of mine said to me once, Protestant language, he said, when you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything else is number two. And I said, Lewis, that makes a lot of sense. That sounds very wise. When Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you know this, and you profess this from the day of baptism, it's professed for you by your godparents. If you're an adult, it's professed by you. It's renewed every Sunday. Every time you say the creed daily, but especially in church, it's renewed. Jesus Christ is the Lord, and he is number one. And for St. Theodore, as you know, he took that even to death. 
or rather, as it was mentioned last night, the details came last night, a rather spectacular death in the name of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, if you noticed the weather, it was really a nice day. It was warm, it was pleasant. In every way, it reminded me of a lot of Good Fridays when the calendar has Good Friday and Pascha earlier, you know? And it reminds me also that the first week of Lent, which we have now closed as of yesterday and now this morning, is actually a preparation for Holy Week. The first week of Lent in black is to prepare us for the Great Week. We switch to purple to prepare for the day when we will switch to white. We do sacrifices, you have fasting, you have, you have all the burdens of your home life and your work life. So do we. And it's to prepare us, really, to come here to the temple. And what is the temple preparing us for? Life eternal. And may God bless us richly with that grace. The blessings of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love towards mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Christ our God, the true in the existence.